Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech Bits. Today we're checking out the TP-Link Wi-Fi 6 AX1500. That's right, friends. Wi-Fi 6 is the AX brand. Here we have AC, and that's Wi-Fi 5. Before that, we had N, and N was Wi-Fi 4. They decided to get intelligent and make a numbering system, so Wi-Fi 6 is the new AX. All you need to know is that it's Wi-Fi 6, and that means it can do a lot more. It's great. It's, oh, let's just get into it. Let's open it up and see what's on the inside, shall we? All right, so as soon as we take it out of the box, first up, I really love the packaging. Stuff that can be recycled. Very nice. You got all the yada yadas. Remember when they used to pack advertisements with your new products? I kind of like that. I kind of miss that. Anyways, getting it out of the packaging the first time is always the best. Oh, that looks sick. That looks nice. Check that out. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Kinda slipstreamed for her pleasure. All right. Now let's give it a shot. It's interesting how they're changing the numbering system up over here. Like on the older AC 1200s, they either went 1200 or 1600, but this one is the 15, just how it goes. Let's hook her up and see how she goes. All right, so I got it plugged in and going, and it looks like the overlapping channels, or sorry, the channels are not overlapping. Got my current Wi-Fi neighbor's Wi-Fi and here is mine and the neighbor's Wi-Fi this is on 5G as long as we're within the same Wi-Fi range we're gonna be okay as long as we're within the same channels I should say doesn't look like it put ourselves in uh, the perfect Wi-Fi channel range when it comes to the 2.4 though you can see we're crossing over between the uh, the 2 and the 3 so it hasn't automatically put itself on a great band Okay, now to get this thing set up, I just connected her up with the hard wire to the router. Remember, it always goes into the yellow port, or the se separate port, the spare port. That's a different color. And then, what's interesting here is uh, it automatically popped up. To avoid conflict with the front end device, the router's IP address has been changed. It automatically changes the IP address, and I love that. So, that'll definitely help us out. Now, this is interesting. As soon as we get into here, it's asking for a new password, which is very secure. We got an auto-connect connection type, which is very nice. Now, one particularly cool thing about this router is there is an app that you can get to use for uh, terms of service so that you can set different power, different strength, parental control to the unit and to per device. Automatically asks you to upgrade firmware if available. Very nice. Now this kind of sucks. I get to this point, I got all the information in, I hit next. It doesn't seem to do anything for uh, a minute, and then it comes right back to where it was. This is what I expect from most riders. So at this point, there's really not much I can do but exit and cancel all the stuff that I just put in. Unfortunately, you got a JavaScript void. Yay, JavaScript. That's unfortunate. Okay, so I've come to a point where it is not doing anything. I guess all that I can do is try to give it a hard boot and hope uh, it works out better next round. Alright, so fortunately all the information stuck. The password and the new name stuck after the reboot. I guess once I did that, what it didn't tell me is I had to reboot the unit or at least get on to the new Wi-Fi range. A message would have been nice. Okay, first up, let's connect this thing uh, to a speed test and see how it does on this new network and then go test it on my old router. Alright, so that's 151 down, 10.05 up. Now remember, this is megabits, not megabytes. And a bit is one-eighth of a byte. Alright, so that's interesting. On my old Wi-Fi, I'm only making uh, 9.81 megabits. Seriously interesting. You know, I'm going to unplug this thing, give it one more shot, because remember, those channels are conflicting a little bit, and we'll see if it has any difference. Nope, same thing. That is kind of interesting. Okay, so next up, what I wanted to do was test out my Xbox uh, One. You can see over here we have download speed of 84.98 megabytes. This is with the Wi-Fi 6 Wi-Fi, I'm going to test this compared to my local area network connection. 
Okay, so this Wi-Fi 6 unit is better than my wife, than my hardwire connector. That is amazing. That I maybe I need to check some cables or something like that. Anyways, this one gets um no, sorry, I did that wrong. The the hardwire is definitely better. The hardwire is definitely better cuz I have higher latency on hardwire connector. My goodness, I have higher latency on high, hardwire connector, faster download speed and slower upload speed no packets lost that's amazing that's freaking amazing i get lower latency latency when i am on the wi-fi huh all right so i'm starting to think that the smart connect settings on my home router is a bit loopy because when i connect with both these iphones i get about the same speed with my regular router versus this newer one I gotta say though, so far I don't have any major complaints, the speed on it's really great, I got everything here hooked up to it, and um, so far, once again, no complaints. So it should be said there are differences within the Wi-Fi these days, uh, they're numbered like I said before, remember Wi-Fi 4 is N version, number 5 is AC, and the latest one AX is Wi-Fi 6. And this thing, man, I gotta say, I'm uh, really pleased with it, how quickly it's caught on. To the network settings and how quickly I've gotten it going so let's look at the software and now and then I'll do a teardown okay so next up let's check out the TP link tether app this is available on Android or iOS marketplaces you open it up it'll give you the instructions of how to connect this sucker and here we can see my sucker and we'll get into it and see what she says now right now I have this set up as access point mode so here you can see I definitely got a router. I'm using the bottom one and I definitely got a router between me and this other router. I got this router is hooked up to a giant switch and that switch is hooked up to my router slash modem combo. And it looks like as soon as I did that, I lost the ability to do some things. For example, so up at the top, you can see we have the status that says we have the internet, the router is on, and we have 13 clients. If I have this in standard mode and not access point, I can click into different units and say, on this one, I'd like to have parental control, on the other one, not so much, yada yada. But anyways, here we can see in the clients list everyone that we have, and if you have it set up in regular mode, then you can block uh, certain websites you can set up parental control or set up how many hours people are on for come back over here to tools within the tools we can do a quick setup we can check out the wireless settings we can set up a guest network we can share Wi-Fi check out the operation mode once again and then come on down to system we can manage passwords set up firmware or if we come back to home if I click on uh, Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6 5G, it'll show me, <coughs> excuse me, it'll show me that uh, it'll show the password. And I don't want to give up my password right now exactly. But within there, you can set up the smart mode. And smart mode is when people connect to it and it decides for itself if it's going to put you on 2.4 or 5G. So I switch the operation mode back to wireless router and we get a whole new host of information, of things that we can go through. And if we go to home, I get fewer clients because the other ones haven't connected yet. But if I come over here to clients, I can see, for example, that the Xbox One is downloading and uploading. It'll show us exactly how fast or slow. I can click into that and I can um, set it as a high priority. Oh, apparently I have to set up quality of service before setting that up. And I can access parental controls. In the parental controls, I can add web pages or I can add time limits, which is very desirable. Very nice. It looks like everything that you could do, enable QoS, save. It looks like everything that you could do from the router, you can do from this handset app which is really cool network diagnostics great you're online good stuff 
Now, if you use a web browser to use the advanced settings, here's what it looks like. Here's the advanced, the network, the internet info, the LAN info, IPTV, DHCP server, dynamic, routing, the wireless, I'm not going to show you the wireless settings because uh, it shows password, and guest network setup. Here's the NAT forwarding, so port forwarding is what everyone's going to be interested in. Here's port triggering, UPND, DMZ, parental controls. Here I got Jen's phone on four hours, one device, insights, top 10 visits. Hmm, today, yesterday, no history. Huh, that's interesting. You can see people's history. Okay, so I wonder back in the day w when I was surfing the net, I don't know, I kind of think like maybe, maybe we're, uh, maybe we're messing around a little bit too much with uh, seeing our kids' histories. Are we being a little too invasive? Maybe not. I don't know. It just seems creepy to be able to see it at the router level. But then again, I guess they do that at work. VPN server. PPTP connections, IP version 6. Man, we're still not on IP version 6 yet for the most part. Are we? We're still using version 4. We we're supposed to have changed over, what, 20 years ago? Something like that. Anyways, those are the advanced settings for this unit. Now, I should say that this router has definitely brought my game up. I got a hardwired connection here on Fortnite, and I usually get errors, but I have not been experiencing any errors like that since I've installed this router. Super happy with it. No lags, no... I, I gotta do some more port forwarding to make it work perfectly, but I gotta say, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really surprised it works this well. Oh heavens, will you look what time it is? It's teardown time. Man, the folks who create routers really love their clips. So here we have the LEDs. Here we have the meat and potatoes. Apparently there's a 1.5 gigahertz processor in here. So uh, let's have a closer look, shall we? Alright, so closer look at the inside. We got a Broadcom chip in there. Now, let's get the Phillips head screw out and see if we can see one level deeper flip that up we'll see the back side of course i've got the last heat shield off after i got the heat sink off there's that broadcom chip there that looks a lot better i got these guys over here And then I'll work on this one. Okay, not particularly a lot under that chip. Must have been just to um, keep away electromagnetic radiation. But ultimately, that is the motherboard. And that's the teardown, folks. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the TP-Link Archer AXT-10. Definitely recommend it. It has good speed, good transfer rates, especially if you're on Wi-Fi 6. And even if you're not, I'm really impressed uh, with the level of speed that we are getting from this guy with, without even needing to get into Wi-Fi 6. But that's what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. It's good stuff. I definitely recommend you check it out. Link in the description. Like and subscribe if you like this stuff. Always appreciate it, folks. And as always, take care of each other.